Now before we get into the video, I do want to say a massive thank you to today's video sponsors and once again that is JerseyFIFA.com. They really do help keep the content on this channel going and they even sent me a free shirt which you can see on screen here. And as you can see, I got the new Manchester United home kit and genuinely the kit really really is top quality. I highly recommend their product. So make sure to get in a link in the description down below and now if you use code JerseyFIFA at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. You get a great football shirt and you help support the channel which I really do appreciate massively. So guys welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing analysis of the opening Premier League fixture of the season between Crystal Palace and Arsenal. And I think in terms of the lineups, the two sides set up exactly how we would have expected with both the personnel and the shape being what I thought the manager would go for for this game. So we are going to start with what Crystal Palace looked to do on the ball, and they often looked to try and play their way out from the back. However, Arsenal done a really good job of putting them under pressure in order to try and stop Palace getting into their rhythm. Now we can of course see that pressure here, with Arsenal committing several players nice and high up the pitch, and to be fair the press was pretty good, Palace did find it extremely difficult at times to play their own game. Now that is certainly a credit to Arsenal, because this Palace team does have some really capable passes like Guehi and Anderson. However, the relentless pressure from Arsenal really stopped them from playing out. Now unsurprisingly, as a result of this, we started to see the Palace keeper playing in a much more direct fashion. Palace were no longer taking risks with the play out, and instead they were now sending the ball in a much more direct fashion. Again, that is exactly what we can see here, as Guaita decides it's not worth the risk. So instead he chooses to send the ball long, with Ayu the target on this occasion, and it was a method that sort of worked. Now whilst it was RU in that situation, more often than not, Edouard was the target up front, and he almost operated as a bit of a backboard for the team, going long to him which just allowed the team to progress. As a result of this hold up play, Palace were finally able to progress the ball past their own defensive third, and towards the middle of the pitch, from where they then attempted to try and build possession in a 2-3 shape, with Decore playing central. Now unfortunately I couldn't quite find a picture with all of these 5 players in shot, However, I think you get the idea, with the fullback staying quite wide in this third, with Decore very much alone in the middle. Now, to be fair, I think this will have done Decore's confidence the world of good. This was his first ever match in English football, and Vieira seemed more than confident to hold the midfield down as a solo pivot. Unfortunately for Palace, despite showing confidence, Vieira was wrong, because Decore became overran. So again, eventually we saw Schlupp dropping deeper. However, even he was then followed closely by Thomas Partey in the midfield. For me, this was really the clear sign of intent from Arsenal. Even when Palace were dropping players deeper, Arsenal were still pressing them, and pretty much every time Schlupp got the ball, he was forced backwards. As a result of this, Schlupp really wasn't able to get into the game, especially during the first half, where he just really didn't have much of an impact at all, and that is obviously an issue when you're talking about a midfielder here. Arsenal's pressing continued, however, to do this they did have to deploy a high line, and this was where Palace finally had some luck with Anderson picking the ball up before playing long passes over the top of the defence for Zaha to get onto. For me, Anderson is one of the most underrated passers of a ball in the Premier League, but I thought he was brilliant, and this really was Palace's best approach because it allowed Zaha to get at Ben White in these areas. Disappointingly, from a Crystal Palace point of view, despite getting Zaha into some promising positions, he just never really delivered, and I thought he could have done more to get at the out-of-position Ben White. I think largely what we can tell from what we've seen so far is that Palace struggled to get too much supply to the forward players, especially in the first half, and actually their best chances came from some rather sloppy Arsenal errors and individual moments. Again, this was something that we saw more in the first half, with both Ramsdale and Gabriel getting caught in possession, in some really dangerous areas, but again these chances never really came to anything. Overall, that was sort of the story of the night for Palace. They done well to stay in the game for so long, before getting themselves into some dangerous areas, however they just lacked that final bit of quality that they needed. Overall, I think Vieira will be content with what he saw. The true judgement of Palace will come against some of the smaller teams, not against such a sharp Arsenal side. And speaking of them, let's go and take a look at their tactics now. So as we saw up the other end of the pitch, Arsenal wanted to try and build possession from the back, However, Palace looked to press high and put them under pressure. But regardless, Arsenal persisted with their idea and philosophy of trying to build possession. In these pictures here, we can see the sort of pressure that these Arsenal players were under. And also, just apologies if you can hear any background noise right now, there's not really much I can do about it, so you just have to put up with it. Despite the praise for the Crystal Palace players, the press was almost in vain a little bit, for one simple reason. The Arsenal players were just far too sharp and composed, so they were still able to get through the press. As a result of this composure under pressure, Arsenal were able to work the ball towards the middle third of the pitch, from where they then looked to control the game, 
really using a 2-3 shape in order to really dominate the ball and take control. The first thing you'll notice here is that Arsenal's 2-3 shape was much more narrow than the one we saw from Palace earlier, and this meant that the player on the ball always had a passing option nearby. The player that really benefited from this was Thomas Partey in the middle, and when given the ball I felt that he'd done a very good job of setting the tempo, and I thought that he was key to helping Arsenal dominate the match. With Partey and the two fullbacks doing a good job of controlling possession, it then meant that the two other midfielders were able to push forward, with Xhaka moving into this sort of left half space, whilst Odegaard went to the right hand side. To be fair there were times that Xhaka was deeper to help build the play, but more often than not he was much higher, and this allowed both him and Odegaard to receive the ball in these big open pockets of space. To be fair, neither Xhaka or Odegaard were able to do anything particularly special, however they were both very tidy on the ball, and whilst they weren't a massive threat, they still helped Arsenal to control. At times Palace did try to counter this with Decore going out to put a tackle in, but then this left space in front of the defence for Gabriel Jesus to drop into, and he done an excellent job of dropping in and getting the ball in these areas. This is exactly what we can see here with Decore dragged out of position, leaving this space for Jesus to receive the pass, and I thought he was absolutely brilliant once he got the ball in these areas. Unfortunately for Jesus and FPL fans all around the world, he wasn't able to cap his competitive debut with a goal, but I was still really impressed, he just looked a couple of yards sharper than everyone else. Now whilst Arsenal had these nice rotations going on through the centre, they looked to keep things a little simpler out wide, particularly with Bakayo Saka on the right hand side, who regularly held a high and wide starting position on the right. This width is exactly what we can see here and it meant that Saka was often the out ball, allowing him to then get at his man, and that's where the second goal came from. There was a lot of luck, but it came from the width. Overall I thought that Saka drifted in and out of the game a little bit, However, when he was able to get on the ball, he looked really threatening, and in particular his burst of acceleration over a few yards caused problems. We also saw something similar on the left-hand side of the pitch as well, with Martinelli again looking to take up a high and wide starting position. However, unlike Saka, when he got the ball, he then looked to move more into an inside position. Martinelli's intent in his areas was clear from quite early on, with him looking to get the ball with his back to goal, before then spinning and moving inside, and as he drifted in, he seemed to glide past players. For these reasons I think Martinelli had a good game and he seemed a constant threat throughout. He of course got the opening goal from the corner, but he should have scored another one earlier, and it all came from these movements inside. This movement inside obviously had a knock on effect on others as well, because it just created this little bit of space wide on the left hand side, which now meant that Zinchenko had more room to make the run forward to help out with the attacking play. This is something that I was actually a little bit surprised by, because I thought Zinchenko might stick to his narrower position. However, he was happy to get forward, and when doing so, Palace couldn't really stop him. Overall, I thought that Zinchenko was another player who had a positive competitive debut for the club, although I think we did see some signs that he will need to improve from a defensive point of view here at Arsenal. That progress is something that I'm sure we will see as the season moves forward. However, for the opening day, I think Arteta will be pleased with a lot of the things that he saw, and for large periods, Arsenal were very much in control of things. As a result of this control, Arsenal eventually secured the 2-0 win, although to be fair they do need to thank Ramsdale for that, because he did come up with a couple of big saves. Despite being forced into these saves, I still thought that Arsenal always felt the better side, and for me, I don't think the win was ever really in too much doubt, and it was pretty much the perfect start to the season for Arsenal, but I want to hear your thoughts, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will of course see you guys in the next one.